Hi, I'm Dr. Steve Finical. Thanks for considering me and Charlotte Plastic Surgery for your upcoming rhinoplasty procedure. We're excited to have you come visit us and we're very happy to take care of your needs. Most people come in to see me because they dislike some part of their nose, either the dorsal hump, uh, they don't like their profile, the tip is too large, or overall the nose is too large for their face. Surgical rhinoplasty can take care of those things and, and happily is very successful. The surgery that I perform is called an open rhinoplasty and what that means is that I'll make an incision across the skin bridge between the two nostrils and then the rest of the incisions are inside the nose. Through those incisions it allows me to reduce the size of the cartilages that make up the tip of the nose and change their shape so that I can make the tip of the nose smaller and more refined. All through, also through that incision, I'll be able to bring down the bridge of the nose and shape it. Sometimes I do have to infracture the side walls of the nose to make the bridge of the nose narrower and that's all part of an open rhinoplasty. Um, the surgery of cosmetic rhinoplasty we do right here in our office and we have all the safety equipment that you'd normally have at the hospital so it's safe to do it here. Uh, we use a propofol based anesthetic which is an anesthetic that is all intravenous so you're not inhaling gas, you're not going to be sick to your stomach. It goes into your bloodstream and you fall asleep, we turn it off, you metabolize it so fast that you wake up and you feel really good. You may ask yourself, is it really safe to do this kind of a procedure in an office? And yes it is, and there's some advantages to doing it here in our office. First of all, it's quiet, it's very private, and the other thing is our staff here is in tune to your recovery. We do about half a dozen different kind of operations here over and over and over again. And so our staff will know exactly how to take care of you during the entire process from pre-op into recovery. Now there's some things that we'll ask you to do ahead of time to prepare yourself for surgery. The first thing is we'd ask you to stop taking aspirin, ibuprofen, Motrin, goody powder, anything that thins your blood for about two weeks before the procedure. That way at the time of the operation, you clot normally so you don't bleed as much and you don't bruise. Second thing, this is the most important thing you can do and that is nothing to eat or drink after midnight the night before surgery. If you come in the morning of surgery and you have an empty stomach, literally half the risk of the anesthetic is taken right off the table because if there's nothing in your stomach then there's no risk of aspiration so that's very important. The other thing that we'll do is we'll put these squeezer devices called sequentials on your legs before you go to sleep. They're going to pump your legs while you're under the anesthetic and that'll keep the pressure moving in your venous system, the slow system of your circulation, and that'll make sure that you don't develop blood clots while you're asleep. After surgery, you're going to get up and walk out of here when you're done. That's not only good for your circulation, but it's good for your lungs to be upright and walking. Now, when you wake up from surgery, you're going to have a splint on your nose with some tape on the skin and the splint over the top. You're going to have some Vaseline gauze packed into the nose and you're going to have little stitches underneath and then you'll go home with a gauze taped to your cheeks. The very next day after surgery, I'll see you back here and we'll take the, the packing out of the nose. Now the Vaseline gauze just slides out. It's not very uncomfortable or anything like that. Uh, but once it comes out of your nose, then you can breathe through your nose, your sense of taste and sense of smell comes back to normal. The night after surgery, when the packing is in overnight, because you're only breathing through your mouth, you'll be very dry. So you have to keep an ice water next to you at bedtime. And you'll also want to want to keep your head just above heart level. So in a reclined position, so the head is above the heart so you can control swelling. You'll have some swelling underneath your eyes and maybe some discoloration that usually fades over the first week. 
So we'll take the packing out the day after surgery and then I'll see you a week after surgery and we'll remove the splint and we'll take the stitches out. Now at that time, once the, the splint's off and the stitches are out, you may have a little discoloration and you may have to wear a little bit of cover over those areas, but you could go to the grocery store and people are not gonna stare at you. If you want it to interface with people that you really don't want them to know you had something done, you want to avoid those people for about two weeks, if people that really know you. If you have an event where you know you're gonna get your picture taken, like you're in your friend's wedding or you have a class reunion or something like that, you want to give yourself about a month to recover before one of those kind of events. Now, swelling in the nose will go away. About half of it goes away in the first month. The other half takes an entire year. So at the end of the first month, I'll see you back to make sure that the, all the swelling is going out as it should. And you'll have a nice socially acceptable result by then, but it will improve over time. The tip of the nose will feel very stiff for the first six months. It'll feel like it was made out of wood and it won't look funny, but it will feel very, very stiff. And after about six months, it'll start to feel soft again like your ear. Um, in the long run, what you'll, what you'll find is there'll be subtleties that will change over the year where you'll have a more refined appearance one year after surgery than you do one month after surgery. And that's what the effect of the swelling coming out usually accomplish. So I hope this video has been helpful. I made this video in order to give you some information ahead of time before your in-person consultation. So you'll have some things to think about and consider with timing and recovery. And hopefully this answered some questions for you. At the time of your in-person uh, visit here in the office. We'll do an examination, but I also have a picture book full of people that I've operated on so we can look at some before and after pictures so you can see differences and we'll talk about technique and any questions can be answered at that time. So thank you for spending the time to watch this video. I hope that it helps you prepare for your upcoming surgery.